Are you struggling with your Performance Max campaigns? Maybe that's because you're not using the right structure yet. In this video, I will show you how you can boost performance and gain back some control with the ideal structure for Performance Max asset groups. Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Timo and I got clicks in mind. I'm a Google Ads professional and have been running successful Google Ads campaigns for more than five years now. On my website, clicksinmind.com, and now here on YouTube, I'm trying to help people having more success with Google Ads. If you want more success with Google Ads and want to get free tips and insights, you can just subscribe to this new YouTube channel and stay tuned for my next videos. This time, I'm excited to show you my insights on structuring Performance Max asset groups the right way. So let's jump into the screen share. So first of all, let's have a look how asset groups actually work because the structure for Performance Max campaigns is a little different to the structure which we are used to from normal search campaigns because there is not this uh, common structure of campaign, ad group and ad, but there, are, there is the Performance Max campaign and then there are the asset groups. So inside the asset groups, you can add different ad assets. So uh, for example, the final URL, uh, creatives like images, logos, videos, and of course your ad copy, which comes in different uh, categories like the headlines, long headlines and descriptions. And then out of all those assets, the Google Ads algorithm will create uh, responsive ads on all the different networks which they are. So uh, on YouTube, on Gmail, Google search, Google display, and in the discovery network. And also if you have a product feed, also in the shopping network, so also shopping ads. Besides the assets, which are the ad part of the asset group, there is this targeting part. There are audience signals, which you can add, and then there are listing groups. Uh, the listing groups, for example, are uh, the products or product groups, uh, which should be uh, advertised for the specific asset group. And then there are the audience signals, where we'll take a closer look now. So first of all, it's important to understand that the audience signals are no real targeting control inside the Google Performance Max campaigns. So it's no targeting control as we know it, for example, from display campaigns, but it's rather a hint you give the Google algorithm so it can go on on a search and look for the best performing audience, but you give it a little head start with the audience signal. But the Google algorithm will go beyond the limits you set and will just search for the best performing audiences. So inside the audience signals, there are these two categories, the search terms and the actual audience signal. This used to be different, but, but now it looks like this. Firstly, there are the search terms. So there you can define up to 25 uh, typical search queries, which are relevant to your asset group. And then the Google algorithm knows, okay, I should target searches, searches like this. And then there's the actual audience signal where you can define your target audience and tell that to the Google algorithm. But of course, once again, it will go beyond the borders of that. You can define uh, demographics such as age or gender, and you can define um, affinity and in-market audiences. And then of course, um, define remarketing audiences and set the remarketing audiences so you can tell the Google algorithm you should uh, look for people who are, have already interacted, interacted with your business. And uh, this was typically a good idea to boost your performance. So what now is the best structure for your performance max asset groups? In a nutshell, you should build your asset groups around specific themes. So you should divide your campaign into sub themes or sub categories and then create specific ad copy and ad assets for those asset groups. So depending on your campaign, those subcategories can be various things. For example, subcategories of your product, if you're running an e-commerce campaign, so you have a shoe campaign and then you have one asset group for boots and run, one for running shoes and so on. Or if you're running a service uh, campaign for lead generation, you can highlight different benefits or different features of your service in, in the different asset groups and build your assets and ad copies around those. The main benefits of structuring your campaigns like this 
is that you can increase the relevancy of your ads because you can uh, create specific assets um, which resonate with this certain uh, sub uh, category and uh, is more relevant to the user. So in fact, it will boost your uh, click through rate, for example. Also, uh, it makes it easier for you to optimize your campaigns because you can have a look into the different performances of the asset groups and see which messaging or which product group or which category resonates better with your target audience and then um, take the next steps from there. For example, pause asset groups which are not performing as, uh, as well. So overall, this structure helps you get a better performance and then also get more control and more insights into your campaign. If you're still not sure how you would structure the asset groups in your case, let me jump into one or two quick examples to help you understand this better. So let's jump into the two examples. I just set up two demo campaigns so you can better understand how you would uh, structure the asset groups for an e-commerce campaign or also for a lead generation campaign. So in this case, I'm running campaigns for a fashion online shop and have a campaign for men's shoes. And what, I, what I've done is I divided the category of men's shoes in, into the subcategories of running shoes, sneakers, leather shoes, and boots. And then inside each asset group, we have specific images and ad copy, and then uh, also specific audience signals where I would uh, put into uh, the search terms, for example, in this case, running shoes. And then, of course, we have the, would have the listing group so uh, inside the, this asset group for the running shoes, we would only um, add the product categories of running shoes. So with this asset groups, uh, group, only running shoes will be advertised when it comes to shopping ads or product ads in the display network. On the other hand, Performance Max can also be very useful for lead generation. So I created a demo campaign uh, for Google Ads Management. In this case, we only have one service, so Google Ads Management in general, I'm managing Google Ads accounts, but I can also uh, create my asset groups around subcategories because people will search for that service differently, differently based on their situation. For example, I can have an, an asset group for Google Ads for online shops for lead generation, um, for the different campaign types, display ads, search ads, I could create one for YouTube ads and um, then just create um, the specific ads assets, uh, add your audience signals for that specific service and then you will get a much better performance in the end. What you should not do is build your asset groups around different audience signals but with the same assets. Because, as we heard, the audience signals are just hints for the Google algorithm and it will go beyond that. So it's no real targeting control. So having uh, two different asset groups with the same assets and just different audience signals is not a good idea. So if you have structured your asset groups like this, you have uh, an asset group targeting, for example, women over 45 and one targeting men over 25, but the rest of the asset group is exactly the same, this is no, uh, not a good idea. But of course, that doesn't mean that you can't create different asset groups for different audiences. In fact, that's actually a very good idea. But what you should do is create a whole different asset group, so different asset copy, different images, and a different audience signal for every audience. Like in this case, we create um, one asset group for online shops, so Google Ads for online shops, and one for service businesses, so Google Ads for lead gen. And then we go into detail uh, in the specific ad copy and in the images. I hope you now know how you would structure the Performance Max asset groups for your campaigns. Before we end the video, I want to give you a, a few quick tips uh, how you can um, make the best out of your asset groups. So let's jump into the screen share. So first of all, if you have different asset groups, you can actually see the performance for each asset group inside of Google Ads. That's one feature which is maybe a little bit hidden, but you can change the view here from summary 
so table and then you have uh, your asset groups in the table view and then uh, in the first view you don't see any performance metrics but uh, as with the uh, other campaigns uh, you can just get your uh, normal columns you would need um, into the table and then you get the performance details for every asset group in this case of course it's a demo campaign but once the campaign would be running we can compare which asset groups uh, gets the most conversions which one gets the most costs or which one is the, the asset group which gets favored by the google algorithm and so on and if i see one asset group uh, gets um, much of the budget and doesn't perform as well i can just pause it then you might ask how many asset groups are right for your campaign and that's of course this depends on the amount of different subcategories which are logical to your campaigns and just make sense um, don't um, over engineer this uh, you shouldn't have too many asset groups if you have too many asset groups maybe you can split out uh, the asset groups into separate campaigns and um, in general you should aim for maybe 3 to 15 asset groups in general you can have up to 100 but I don't, uh, I would not recommend having so many. So I hope this video was helpful to you and you now know how to implement a new structure into your Performance Max campaigns. Of course, structure is just one piece of the puzzle, but trust me, it's a very important one. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this new channel. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or have any ideas for topics you want me to talk about in my next videos. Until then, Work smart with clicks in mind.